Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. Looking at these beautiful specimens, you might not know it, but today's video is a species profile of what is likely the most familiar isopod around the world, Armadillidium vulgare. After a brief introduction to the species and some of its many beautiful localities and morphs, I'll explain its care and housing needs, and then I'll evaluate its suitability as a cleanup crew member in bioactive vivaria, and finally, we'll discuss how this species does as a pet or hobby isopod. This isopod species could almost do without an introduction. The name, roughly translated, means common little armored one. This name is quite appropriate. The species, though originally from Europe, has accompanied humans so thoroughly in their travels that it can now be found almost everywhere with suitable habitat. It has a multiplicity of names, and many of them, such as roly-poly, are based on the fact that it can conglobate or roll itself up into a protective sphere. It has some geographical variants or localities, as well as many color and pattern morphs. Size-wise, it is considered a medium-sized isopod. I currently have about eight forms of this species. The first is Armadillidium vulgare punta cana. This is a locality of the species which occurs in the Dominican Republic. It's a polymorphic locality, which means that there's a lot of variability in the appearance of the specimens from that area despite their genetic similarity. This is one of my favorite types of this species. As you can see, some of them have thick bands with a beautiful metallic sort of look to them, while others are orange or wild type, and some have patches of almost white coloration. Armadillidium vulgare orange vigor is named for its coloration and hardy nature. They're faster breeding than some of the other types of this species, and range quite a bit in the orange tints that they express. Some wild types occasionally show up as well. I've even had some pop up in my colony that are a lemon yellow with orange heads. Armadillidium vulgare magic potion, the American line, originated from stock collected in Georgia. Not only does it express a pied gene, which makes them white with dark flecks, they're also line bred for a high expression of yellow markings. They get quite large and may take a while to breed, but they're worth it. This is a fairly new type for me, and fortunately, they're already breeding. Armadillidium vulgare magic potion Japanese line, as you might suppose, originates in Japan and may have a lower expression of the yellow markings that were line bred for in the American line, but they do have the dark flecking, just like the American line. Orange Dalmatian, also called Orange Dalmatian Magic Potion, tends to have rust-colored flecks in addition to the dark gray or black flecks of the other Magic Potion lines. This locality from the UK, Armadillidium vulgare High Yellow, reminds me of a paler version of a some Punta Cana individuals, and also like Punta Cana, features some wild types. There are two types of albino Armadillidium vulgare in the hobby. The paler of the two is this one, the T-negative albino. These individuals always remind me of butter. The other albino, the T-positive, is more common in the hobby, but I don't actually own any. They have some kind of caramely brown markings, which increase with age. The T positive stands for tyrosinase positive. Tyrosinase is an enzyme which is part of the process of producing dark melanin pigments. Armadillidium vulgare gem mix is a hodgepodge of various morphs of this species and can look a little bit like a bunch of living jelly beans. My colony of gem mix is fairly new, but once I have a lot of adults, you'll really begin to see that jelly bean effect. Armadillidium Vulgare Night Gold is a line bred strain that I've been working on for some years now, based off of a few highly marked individuals that I collected in a canyon near my home. Before diving into the care requirements for this species, I'd like to recognize my patrons at Patreon. Your support helps me make more videos about interesting creatures to share with everyone, and I am very grateful. If you'd like to help out for as little as one US dollar a month, please click the link at the end of this video or in the description. And if you're watching this video, that's a form of support as well. You can also use the affiliate links in the description or shop at the Aquarimax website. All of those 
play an important part in supporting Aquarimax pets. And now back to Armadillidium vulgare and its care and housing requirements. This is a fairly uncomplicated species to keep in many respects. One thing it prefers is a strong moisture gradient. With this in mind, offer a hydration station in about 25-30% to 30 of the enclosure more or less and let the remainder of the substrate stay relatively dry. Make sure to provide moderate to high ventilation as well. Exactly how much ventilation depends largely on conditions in the room and how often you want to moisten the hydration station, but some airflow is important. I like to provide holes along the long sides of the container for cross ventilation, especially on the drier end of the enclosure, and a few holes on each of the short sides. In many cases, I will also drill some holes along the top edges, again with more of these on the dry side. It bears repeating that the exact number and placement of the holes can vary quite a bit depending on your particular situation. Like many Armadillidium species, the common pill bug goes about life a bit more slowly than some of the other familiar isopods. It tends to move a bit more slowly, be a bit less voracious about feeding, and is considerably slower growing and slower breeding than, say, Porcelio labus or Porcelionides prunosus. This does vary with morph and locality, however. It will eat some protein-rich foods, like fish food pellets, especially when you have large numbers of specimens together, but seems to be especially fond of various forms of vegetable matter, such as squash. Leaf litter and fish food will provide necessary calcium, but some cuttle bone, crushed eggshell, or other calcium-rich foods can be offered as well. Reproduction, as I mentioned, varies somewhat based on morph and locality. Generally speaking, this species is fairly easy to breed, and it produces large numbers of young, but most morphs do not produce young very frequently, and some individuals can take a year or more to mature. I think I'd characterize this species as a moderate breeder. So, does Armadillidium vulgare make a good member of a bioactive cleanup crew? In an enclosure with good ventilation and a moisture gradient, it certainly can. Some reptiles and amphibians will eat this isopod species, so keep that in mind, but if you're looking for a species that can handle high ventilation, some drier spots in the vivarium, and is not crazily prolific, this could be a good option to consider. How about Armadillidium vulgare as a hobby species? Well, this species does have advantages as a pet. It tends to be uncomplicated to keep, as we've seen, comes in a wide variety of morphs, many of which are not very expensive. There are wild types available outside for free in many parts of the world, as long as it's not too dry or too cold. The common pill bug is generally quite slow moving, making it a good candidate for handling, especially for children. And it's not the most active isopod available, but it's not the most secretive either. And once you have a big colony, there will usually be plenty of them roaming about the enclosure at any given moment. It's pretty hard to think of a downside to this species. Perhaps the only one being that it is so common. This is only a downside, though, if you decide that it is one. If you're looking for a slow-moving, rather hardy species with plenty of variety and types of color and pattern that's widely available, Armadillidium vulgare is an excellent species to keep. Which isopod species profile would you like to see next in this playlist? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday with Wednesday live streams all on aquarium and vivarium pets with lots of isopod content. Feel free to rate, share, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for notifications all so you don't miss my next video.